Griffiths, Principal Oboe of the San Francisco Ballet Orchestra. And today I'm going to be talking with Roy Bogus, who will be playing the Beethoven Emperor Piano Concerto with us. Welcome, Roy. Thank you, Laura. And um, first of all, I have to ask, are you a Bay Area native? I am not. Um, I'm from New York originally. I'm born in New York and uh, lived in the East until I was about 11. And uh, then, uh, uh, because of my family moving out to the West Coast, I came to California and I loved it immediately. So, I, I'm, while I'm not a native, I'm a real transplant to California. Well, you're almost a native. Eleven almost counts, yeah. I think. Um, and then, so you have lived here since you were 11. And then, what got you interested in the piano? Did you start at a very young age? Well, it was the fact, yes, I did. It was the fact that my father played the piano a little bit. And we had a piano in the house, and he would uh, play every evening after dinner. I would go and watch, and I was just fascinated. So at, apparently at the age of uh, three, I was uh, sitting by the piano every time that he played, and uh, it just got more and more interested. So was he your teacher? or No, he was not. So uh, I, uh, when I was four, they got me a teacher who lived uh, wow. locally. And apparently I uh, uh, progressed very rapidly because by the time I was five, I was studying with a master teacher in wow. New York. Yeah. I mean, already starting that young, you can't reach the pedals. Your, your feet can't reach the pedals, right? Yes, yeah, apparently it didn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> apparently not. Maybe you had big hands at a young age, too. Yeah, and I, <laughs> and I played in my first recital. It was a student recital when I was six. Wow. Six years old, it was a Mozart concerto. Do you remember your first performance? I do. I remember that very, very well, yes. Were you excited? I mean, I'm very excited. It was upstairs at Carnegie Hall in, in their, their chamber hall. Wow. Uh, and it was, I say, a student recital, so there were many people on the program. But uh, um, uh, my teacher was the, the wife of a famous pianist at that time, Moritz Rosenthal. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she accompanied me in the Mozart concerto. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> Um, so tell me then how this progressed to becoming a professional performer. Tell us the chain of events as you got older. When um, and what did you do? For, were you an accompanist first professionally, or did you become a soloist professionally? How did that transpire? Well, I really was an accompanist uh, professionally, uh, although I did play uh, uh, many solos. Uh, early on. When I was 14, I uh, played with San Francisco Symphony in their youth concerts. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the Shostakovich uh, Concerto Number no. 1, mm -hmm. the one with the trumpet. Yep. Uh, and I, I had a little uh, a bit of a career going uh, by the time that I broke into the concert stage. And that was a very fortunate happening. Uh, my teacher at that time uh, was uh, Adolf Baller, who was the accompanist of Yehudi, Yehudi Menuhin, a um, uh, famous violinist. And he was not able to continue because his activities with his trio uh, and his teaching took him away too much. And so he suggested to Yehudi that he take me as his accompanist. Well, uh, Yehudi didn't know me, so he invited me down to his uh, home in Los Gatos one summer. And I spent two weeks with him, and we played, and we talked, and he decided after that that uh, he would take me on as his accompanist. So, and uh, what year was this, around? It was, uh, it was around uh, 55, yeah, 1955. And uh, I, I met him in Chicago for the first concert, and uh, we had four months of concerts. How was it to accompany him? Was that just... It was a dream, yeah. absolute dream. Not only was he an astonishing musician, mm -hmm. but also he had a, a hands-off policy. He played, I played, and that was it. We, he, he didn't instruct me at all. Uh, so it was very easy working with him. He, so very intuitive, not a lot of talking. It was practically all intuitive. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. and that yeah. was really, really fun to do. I learned so much from him. I, would, I was going to say that probably was a huge learning experience for you. It was. It was musician. tremendous uh, because of the depth of his musicianship. Uh, and I just loved listening to him uh, play the various concertos that he did. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was a Bartok specialist. 
um, and so many things that went on. During that first uh, concert series, the fifth concert that we did was Carnegie Hall. You can imagine, I was <laughs> 19 at the time. Oh, that's fantastic. And then, so I also heard through the grapevine that you competed in the Tchaikovsky Piano uh, Competition, is that That's, correct? That is true. That was the second uh, time they held the competition. The first time everyone knows who won that one, that was Van Cliver. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was in the second one. And I was a finalist, uh, not a top finalist, but finalist nonetheless. And so I participated in that uh, final round in which we all had to play two concerti with orchestra. Yeah. Um, and um, it was uh, really an amazing experience. And afterwards they gave us each a tour. So oh, we had a short okay. tour. Uh, and uh, I, I actually played in Ukraine oh. um, twice. Wow. Um, uh, they were one was recital and one was with orchestra, doing the Tchaikovsky concerto with orchestra. Oh, how wonderful! Um, yes, yeah, so that was really quite a wonderful experience. That's fantastic. It sounds like you had a lot exciting happening in your young life already uh, at age nineteen or twenty, right? I, I did. That's right. Well, I was a little older at that time. Yeah. Um, um, it was in my late 20s, actually, mm -hmm. when, when I went to Tchaikovsky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was a great help in my career because yeah. ha having, having uh, won one of the prizes, um, I then uh, was able to, to break into uh, uh, various concert venues. Well, that put your name on the, on the map, Put so my to name speak. on the map, yeah. right. Yeah. I heard also that you did some conducting. Is that correct? Yeah, that was later on. I had actually studied conducting. I studied okay. conducting in Vienna with uh, a famous teacher there, Hans Swarovski. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, yes, there were, there were many eminent students in that class. Uh, um, um, Zubin Mehta was one, uh, for example. Um, yes, so I uh, did uh, know how to conduct. And later on, I did have my own orchestra when I was uh, on the faculty at Holy Names College uh, in Oakland, the uh, president of the college asked me if I would revive their orchestra. They had had one previously, uh, but it was not functioning at the time. And so I did, and I brought some of my friends in, um, mm -hmm. and we had, uh, I had 17 years of conducting that, a, what amounted to a community orchestra, uh, and uh, enjoyed that very, very much. Did you ever get to a point where you thought, Conducting piano solo career, which should I do? Or did you just never think of choosing between those? No, I never did think of, of choosing that. But uh, I guess interesting about the conducting, my first conducting experience was way back when. It was with San Francisco Ballet. Okay. It was on a tour of South America. And this was the, my first contact with, uh, with San Francisco Ballet. Um, uh, it was a State Department tour okay. at the time. Our uh, conductor at that time, this is 1958, uh, was Earl Bernard Murray, who was a trumpeter in the San Francisco Symphony. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went on this tour on a shoestring budget. So they needed to have a pianist for some of the ballets, but they also needed an assistant conductor. So I was taken as an assistant conductor and pianist. <laughs> and. Um, Sounds like they got a good bargain. Well, <laughs> well, Lou Christensen, who was our director at the time, was very much afraid that I might have to conduct him because he didn't didn't know whether I could do it or not. <laughs> I'm sure you would have been fine. <laughs> and it actually happened. And when we were in Lima, Peru, um, our conductor uh, Earl Bernard Murray twisted his ankle coming <laughs> off the podium in a rehearsal. And he was something of a hypochondriac, and he insisted that he could not get up that day. And we had a performance in the evening. So, willy-nilly, I had to uh, conduct the performance. Do you remember what it was? Um, I do. It was Concerto Barocco, which is the, uh, the Bach double uh, concerto, okay. the two violins. Yes. Um, it was Jinx. Um, uh, that uh, ballet was um, uh, Vaughan Williams. And then we did Con Amore, which were the three Rossini overtures. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Thieving Magpie and two other right. overtures. Right. Right. And I, I knew that quite well. 
Um, so it went fine. I remember that one of our guest soloists on stage um, told me, don't worry about it, he said, uh, because we, oh yes, there was also a black swan pas de deux. <laughs> he says, don't worry about it, Roy. He says, when I go up, you go up. When I come down, you come down. <laughs> had uh, some uh, wonderful people in the ballet at that time. One of the core dancers was Michael Smuin. And of course, he later on became a director. Right. Um, and uh, um, when Michael started to um, um, do some choreography, um, he, he knew me at that time because of the tour. Mm -hmm. And I would uh, come in and play some of his things. And then that developed in 1974 into his asking me to be resident pianist for the ballet. Uh, okay. uh, not so much to doing class work, mm -hmm. but to doing performances. Right. Yeah. And, and you continued that for many, many and years. And then I continued yes. that for quite a long time. Right. Right up until this year. Right. Right. And we're so lucky to have you doing this concerto. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you about that because I've been here for about as long as Martin has so since 2006. Yes. And in my time here, I've heard you um, do chamber music at the ballet. You've also done solos such as the Jerome Robbins, the Chopin um, uh, pieces. Uh, yes, the uh, uh, Dances at a Gathering, for example, is a whole hour of piano. Piano alone. Piano music, right? yeah. We, and then, al we also did, um, we did his other Chopin ballets. Uh, we did the concert. Yes, yes, right. Yeah. Yes, that's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, the, all the concerti that you've played with us. So I'm just wondering, was the, is there one of those three that you prefer uh, to do? You know, do you? Well, I I enjoyed them all, uh, but the the most fun to do, um, actually, it was another Robbins uh, ballet. Uh, called In the Night. Oh yes, I know. Yes, it. which was just uh, just piano it's so beautiful. with six dancers. Yes. A lovely ballet yes. Yes. and wonderful music. Yes. And in in that situation, I was the conductor because I had complete control over, yep. over the music. So I had to coordinate with the dancers and work with them, and that was really a pleasure. We did that all over the world. And in that instance, they have you set up on stage, is that correct, or in the pit in such a way that you can the dancers can see you? And yes, you, you know, there's an elevator in the pit on one side, right. and so I was on that elevator, and they raised me up almost to the level of, of, of my eyes being at the floor of the stage, right. so I, I was not blocking any views, mm -hmm. but I could actually see all the dancers' feet, uh, which was important. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but I, I enjoyed all of the concerto uh, work, too. Yeah. Um, I, I was looking over um, my notes about what I had played with the ballet over the years, and it turns out to be over 25 different ballets, including many piano concertos. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, both Ravel concertos, uh, yeah. the, the, the G major, mm -hmm. in, with two different choreographers, and the uh, left hand concerto in a really stunning ballet by Yuri Posakhov um, on the story of Medea, uh, and all, all kinds of different um, concerti and various things. And of course, there was the chamber music also. We, yes. we had uh, Mark Morris left to do chamber, mu chamber music. Right. So we did the Beethoven Trio. Um, among other things, we um, and um, uh, one of the ballets um, was also done to a Dvorak piano. I remember that. Piano mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, and when you're playing something, I'm just curious from an oboist standpoint because I can't see the stage at all, mm -hmm. and I'm following the conductor to help me to know when to play with the dancers. So, when you are doing the Chopin, for example, are are you kind of before you play, are you kind of giving them a nod to know when you're starting, or just do you have certain cues to look for? To oh know yes, how there's, to, there's a cue for every single one. Right, uh -huh. and you have to remember that in addition to. Everything you're not playing. only remember that, we have to practice that. Yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. That's a big, you know, because the, the conductor just has, I mean, it's a big job to follow the dancers. But then if you're also performing on your instrument and having to stay with the dancers, that's a double, um, hugely Im important responsibility to Oh, have to oh it is, those, completely, you know? yes. It <laughs> has to be totally coordinated. For example, at, at the beginning of In the Night, mm -hmm. um, the, the first pair of dancers comes out from um, uh, upstage left, mm -hmm. and they take a step with one foot, and then the other foot, and then the left foot, and then the right foot, and then when they take the left foot the third time, <laughs> that's when I start. So that's the kind of thing that I have to watch out for. You can't for. be nearsighted. You have to really be able to see it. Wow, that's really something. So, you know, my, my next question as an instrumentalist, and you and I have played together um, many yes. times. Yes, we You've have. accompanied me many times, which has been wonderful. How, you know, you've obviously, you're talking about accompanying dancers and what you have to do and what you have to look for. Yes. Um, how would you compare that for our audience to explain the comparison between that and accompanying, say, a singer or an instrumentalist like me? They're very, very different. Yeah. Uh, for one thing, um, dancing is a physical activity. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, uh, to put it uh, uh, very simply, when a dancer goes up in the air, he or she comes down. And you have to be there when, the, when their <laughs> foot hits the floor. So you really do have to, to coordinate with the rhythm of the dance. Mm -hmm. And so it's important, um, depending on how much responsibility you have, um, it's important to know the, the dance, mm -hmm. uh, to know what, it, what the various steps are that they have to take. Not in the detail that you need to be a ballet master, but you need to know certain places mm -hmm. um, uh, where you have to coordinate with them. The other thing that is really, really different is that um, Dancing is much more rhythmically strict mm -hmm. than uh, performing on an instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, we take uh, various liberties with the time as we play mm -hmm. according to what the music demands, but in dance that's not quite the way they do it. So they're, they're counting uh, carefully and they have their own count uh, and you have to be there with them. So, for example, in this concerto that we're playing uh, now, this Beethoven concerto, in the slow movement, there are many places where I would ordinarily take some liberties with the time, but I just cannot do it because of the dance. Mm -hmm. So it has to be a rhythmically solid, rhythmically strict, yeah. um, and I have to uh, uh, put, put my, my musical ideas more into dynamics mm -hmm. and phrasing. Mm -hmm. So it's different in that way. Of course, the other thing is that when I play with a, with a uh, soloist um, or a singer, then I have to know what they want to do. And uh, uh, in some cases, they have to know what I want to do. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah but n none of that occurs with dancing. Right, it's more, much more physical with the dancing. Yeah, completely, and, yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I wanted to also ask you, you've done so many performances, it's probably hard to keep them all straight, but would you, were there some that were more memorable than others? Is there, is there some, in the recesses of your mind, some favorite performance that you oh, had, or one well, of your favorites? You could probably guess uh, which one that was, that was the Rachmaninoff uh, uh, Rhapsody on the theme of Paganini. I love yeah. that piece. It was th that, yes. Yeah, we, we all had solos in it. Yeah. You had a yeah. lovely solo yeah. in there yeah. as well. Yeah, I'm we, glad to hear you say that. I enjoyed that too. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that was really, really fun yeah. to do. Yeah. Uh, a wonderful ballet too. Yes. Yeah, but we, we enjoyed working on that together mm -hmm. and performing it. I hope we it. do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do it again. And you know, uh, uh, after the last performance, uh, we've done it uh, several different times, mm -hmm. but after the last performance of, of it, um, it a, a little um, meeting was held downstairs uh, with the orchestra, and Martin, our conductor, Martin West, and 
as a token of his appreciation, he gave me his conducting score, which every member of the orchestra had signed. I was so touched right. by that. I remember and, that. Right, and that yeah. reflects the wonderful relationship that I've had with the orchestra all this time. Mm -hmm. I, I regard you all as my close friends. Well, and we, and likewise, and we're always so happy to have you come and play. So that was a, that was reciprocal, absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad that you said that. Yeah. Um, I, the, you know, the, the last thing I wanted to talk about was the actual piece that you'll be playing now next week, starting yes. next week, this Beethoven Concerto, Piano Concerto Number no. 5, which is called The Emperor. Could you tell us a little bit about that piece? Um, certainly. Um, it is, it, it's in C major, this, this concerto, and um, it's one of the happiest pieces that I know. It, it's a very bright, forward-looking piece, um, and uh, it just makes you feel good to hear it, and it, it, it's a feel-good piece to play. Also, uh, it has uh, uh, has a quick movement to start with, um, and a, a quick movement to finish with, um, but a, a very slow adagio in the middle, which is just a lovely, lovely movement. Mm -hmm. But the, what I retain from um, playing it and uh, enjoying it so much is its uh, light, bright character. Uh, anyone who hears that piece just feels good because of of, of the uh, um, uh, of, of the uh, very um, optimistic character to the music. And we need we need that right now. We need some optimism. We sure do. <laughs> It will be wonderful to hear something so uplifting at this time, and um, thank you so much for telling us so much about your amazing life that you've lived so far. Thank and you. I look forward to performing with you, and thank you for watching today, and um, I hope you will come uh, hear us and see us. Thank you.